kidney disease and obesity. Healthy lifestyle for healthy kidneys. Now why are we concerned with obesity? What is obesity first of all? It is derived from a Latin word. It's very self-explanatory. Eaten till fat. You have eaten so much that you have become fat. So obesity word is derived from that. Now what does WHO say? What is the definition of obesity? Obesity is abnormal or excessive accumulation of fat that will impair weight. It is little different from overweight. See, majority are overweight. Not necessarily all of them are obese. That means little extra weight doesn't impact your health. So it has a cosmetic effect. That's a different issue. I'll come to that a little later. But obesity has medical implications. So you have so many risks which I will cover a little later. Why should we worry for obesity? A country like ours, we were always calling us poor country, then we said we are a developing country, so we are growing like that. So, what is the biggest problem now in the world is obesity. It is growing. If you see between 1980 to 2014, this statistics is from WHO in 2014. The newer statistics have not come. The obesity has doubled. India is a very peculiar country. India, we have existence of underweight on one side and we have obesity. Both are growing. <laughs> we grow both. <laughs> so we have that. So 1.9 billion people are overweight, out of which 600 million people are obese. What? Of course, as she, Sundar has already said, it's a woman's day. So women say, are exceed the men. They are marginally more. I haven't put the percentage <laughs> to keep it little lighter. But women have little more obesity than men. It has doubled. What is most concerning is children. Obesity has gone up in children. See, unfortunate. See, we have an attitude in the mind from beginning that a child should be chubby. <laughs> so, the first year of life, you overfeed the child. This mistake is still happening after years. The maximum fat cells are put in the first year of life. If you overfeed your child in the first year of life, this fellow in his life is going to have problem of overweight and obesity. <laughs> Whatever he does, he is going to suffer. So please remember, it starts right in the first year of life. Don't think your child should be chubby. Your child should be healthy. He should fall in the right weight perspective. That's all. Doesn't have to be chubby. The old uh, Murphy baby and all should go off. <laughs> so having our Amul baby, Murphy baby, all those things used to be there when I was in school. So they wanted to make, I still remember in my own house, we had a relative who used to feed the child with one full bottle of milk. Poor fellow used to vomit. She used to feed him again. <laughs> <laughs> so it is possible. Then this man is going to suffer in his life. Nobody can help him because you have increased his cells. So children, we are concerned. We have done a study. The study we did, again, uh, in the college students, we found 15% are overweight or obese. So it's a big concern even in this country. Obviously, all of you know the causes. We will come to it a little later. Ah, this is interesting. So how do we diagnose obesity? Now I ask you, you will tell obesity. Yeah? Looking at a fellow, I know he's obese. Looking at a fellow, I know he's thin. That's what we do. It is only visual image or body perception. We look at the mirror and say, oh, I am fat. Now, many people tell me I am thin. I am not thin. If you go scientifically by the measurements, which I'll come a little later, I am on the borderline, obese. I won't say obese, overweight. I am just on the border. But a lot of patients tell me, you are very thin doctor. It's not so. So what we have is a visual impression. You know, I had a famous surgeon coming from Poland, a transplant surgeon, Dr. Uswaski. So that man, uh, we had a free time, I took him to Mahabalibaram. What we do is the nearest good center that we have is Mahabalibaram. So we went in the car. So on the way he asked me, what is this? I said, this is buffalo. After some time he went, he asked me, what is this? I said, this is cow. After some, buffalo, cow, this went on. Buffalo, cow, buffalo, cow. This fellow, then he asked me, how do you know which is buffalo and cow? I said, we know in India. We just look at it, I know it's a buffalo. <laughs> Or a cow. Don't ask me what are the differences. <laughs> then I went over and found out what are the differences. But there is no need for differences. Like <coughs> visual impression. We think, look at a fellow, we say he's obese. I'm sure some of you would have seen uh, Peter Sellers' movie, Party. 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 Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. So Peter Sellers will walk. 
he will just stumble. That lady will get angry. She will tell him, whom do you think you are? She will say, in India, we know whom we are. We don't have to think whom we are. So it's like that. What we do in obesity is visual impression, which can be wrong. So what you should have is scientific measurements. There are two things in scientific measurements. One is body mass index, and the other one is waist impression. So what is body mass index? Everybody knows. How do you diagnose overweight? Look on the weighing scale, you know your weight. But weight can vary with your height. Somebody who is tall will have a different weight. Somebody who is short will have a different weight. So height has been compounded into it. So BMI is called body mass index, is weight in kilogram divided by square of height in meters. Now this is very difficult previously. <laughs> How do you calculate all this? Now everybody has a calculator in the mobile phone. So it is not that difficult. I know this excuse of difficulty in calculating body mass index should you don't have to go to a doctor to calculate your body mass index. So of course there is a caution in children who are less than 5 years of age. So this was the instrument we used to use. 20 years back a fellow used to come to my room, we didn't have calculators, I mean, we didn't have calculators, we were not using it as doctor. We had this so called equipment to diagnose your BMI. Turn the weight turn the height in pounds or in meters and then you say oh your BMI is 22 so you are not obese so this was a meter used in those days nowadays you have your mobile for that so the BMI normal BMI is 18.5 to 24.9 this is considered normal see visual impression is wrong as I told you my BMI is around 24.8 so I am just on the borderline you go to 25 to 29.9, you are overweight. Okay, accepted. Obese, this is the area which is dangerous. The last three, you are going to be in lot of trouble. 30 to 34.9. The last one, 40, you saw it. The Egyptian lady who was transported by a crane in Bombay. I, I don't think they can ever operate on her. It's a good publicity. So the last one, so morbidly obese. Then they can't even, <coughs> you have to use a crane to lift it. So this is the BMI. So this is a scientific way. Now, this scientific way also has a fallacy. And that is proved specially by Indians. <laughs> we will look at this. This is a fellow. Now you take his height and weight, both are okay. But he has a big punch standing in front of him. <coughs> so that's why this weight state ratio came. This is called trunkal obesity. This is different from a fellow who is overweight, who is bulky, who has big arms and is weight. He is a different fellow. <coughs> Compare a chap who is thin in the arms, legs, but he stands with a big paunch in front. So this is called visceral, I mean trunkal obesity. This trunkal obesity has higher risk because it corresponds to deposition of fat in various organs. So the complications of obesity are more in trunkal obesity. That's why we have now what is called a waist hip ratio. I don't require a, a coronary angiogram or a CT scan, 64 CT to tell you you get a heart attack. If you have an abnormal uh, waist hip ratio, you can have a chance of getting a heart attack is high. So it is such a good indicator that there is fat deposition in various viscera, various organs in the arteries is waist hip ratio. Now how do you measure it? So take the thinnest point on your uh, under the rib usually it falls above the umbilicus just above the umbilicus that's called the waist so you take a measurement there you take your measurement at the widest point in the hip so that's called the hip so you require just a measuring tape and a calculator and you know what is your waist hip ratio so a waist hip ratio should be less than 1 for a woman it should be less than 0.9 for a man <coughs> anything more than 0.9 is abnormal Women have a, you know, I mean the other way around. The women have a pelvis which is larger. So if it is more than 0.9, it is abnormal for a woman. Whereas if it is more than 1, it is abnormal for a man. So this is the waist tip ratio which measures the, accordingly the obesity used to be classified as the apple shape. So somebody who is fat at the middle and thin down is an apple shaped obesity. The other one is the pear shape, where you are thin up and then you become broad down. That is the typical feminine one. So the apple shaped one is associated with more risk. That is the higher waist and less of hip. If you have a greater hip, less of waist is still safe. Now, tell me the difference. 
I'm sure all of you are seeing it. I have three animals on this side. I have three animals on this side. I'm sure these are animals in bind. That's why I said the wisdom is the cause of problem. Animals in bind eat natural food. See the cat. See the dog. See the cow. They are all animals in bind. Now see the domesticated one fed by the man. That is the cat, that is the dog, that is the cow. <laughs> so, obesity is produced by food. The more natural food, the thinner you are. If you go in nature, jungle, they are all thin. Waste to ratio is less than 0.8. <laughs> Whereas in cities, it's more than one. Human beings, we eat, we have we designed our brain. And there are, of course, marketing people like Rajan who promote foodstuffs. <laughs> Make people eat well, so we are in trouble. So what does WHO say? Fundamental cause of obesity is a mismatch between what you eat and what you spend. Hardly any of my patients will accept. Every time I tell him, no sir, I don't eat at all. <laughs> sir, I have to go. I eat only two chapatis. <laughs> I have only two dosas, but the follow is like that. So, WHO says it is a discrepancy, you are eating too much, spending less, that's why you are getting obesity. Whereas not a single patient is accepted. So what is the reason? I will tell you, there are two reasons. One which I have coined is black calories. People have two accounts. <laughs> of course, you know now it is dangerous. So one is a straight account where they tell in front of the spouse. <laughs> two chapatis, two idlis and two dosas. The badam alwa, the other things are in the black accounts. Not mentioned at all. So the black calories. So your badam alwa of 50 grams is 400 calories. Whereas your two idlis is only 80 calories. You are accounting very less, not paying tax. 25% <laughs> tax, 75% unaccounted. So, black calories. The biggest cause. So, what I do, tell my patient is, maintain a log book. Keep a book, right? For one week, from morning till night, including a glass of water, what do you get? Then show it to me. I will look at it and tell you where the problem is. Don't come and tell me, I don't eat at all, I am fat, that fellow is eating, he is thin, this job doesn't work. So not a single fellow agrees. Very rarely people say, accept, yeah, I over eat. Majority tend to deny. As soon as you tell him, he says, I don't eat at all. So, black curve. So increase in the energy dense foods. This is important. From natural food, we have moved to refined food. Energy dense, calories are more. Uh, sugar syrup, sugar water. We take a lot, lot, lot of colas. As you know, in the West, the biggest problem is people drink huge glasses with uh, soft drinks. That is the cause of obesity amongst college children and schools, etc. With the food, they have a huge half a liter of uh, soft drink. So that has a lot of calories. Sugar drinks, highly refined. Even fat, of course, but fat is not a great culprit. The greater culprit are the sugars, the refined carbohydrates. Unrefined is different. So, increase in the energy dense foodstuffs, which has changed. See, the energy dense ones are more palatable, natural ones are not palatable. See, taste is also development. So, you encourage people to develop a taste for more refined foodstuff, and then you are in trouble. So, increase in physical inactivity. I could put the other way now a decrease in physical activity if you want. I see it even now. I take my car and uh, at Panagal Park, I go around, I have to stop, uh, I can't drive. What is the problem? A lady is getting down of, uh, in front of Nali shop. She can't get down at the parking. She has to get down right at that Nali shop only to walk only two steps to buy her sari. So, <laughs> physical inactivity is so much. You don't want to even park at your parking and go to your place. You want to get down at the doorstep. So, that is the physical inactivity due to nature of work and as you know well in US it was common even now in India it is common what are you doing sir three days in a week I work from home <laughs> so the fellow doesn't want to travel he is typing and then he is working on his laptop how is he going to burn the calories what he has eaten so nature of work has changed transportation has changed 
urbanization. So all these factors result in decreased burning out of your calories. So you are not burning your calories, but at the same time you are increasing your calories, obesity has to be there. Sir. But to make patients happy, I always tell them there are other factors. Don't worry, it is not just your overeating. So there are so many other factors. Let's look at each. Every fellow will always tell me, sir, genetic factor. My family itself is fine, what can I do? <laughs> so I am fat. No, 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 no. Family's tradition is to eat more. That's why you are fat. It's not a genetic factor. The whole family is eating fat. So what can I do? So familial, I would not call it genetic. More familial factors. So fat families are there. I don't say no. So, but don't blame the family. I know a lot of families where there are thin people. So what is very important is lack of motivation. People don't have motivation to lose weight. Classic example are women. I should say it again in the women's so Before marriage, you see, they're all thin. Especially our Rajasthani friends are there. Ask them. <laughs> I have my friend Chaudhary. Ask how was his wife before marriage. She was only 42 kilos. He brought her with me. Now you ask her, Chaudhary says 82 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage is over, child is produced, she is 82. <laughs> so, lack of motivation. The motivation is there before wedding. There is a need to lose weight. People then will look at it. They will look at their food stuff. They will increase their activity. Lack of motivation is the most important factor according to me for producing obesity. Genetic factor, I would call it familial factors. Hormonal changes. See, there are certain hormonal conditions where obesity is a problem. But not all, but it's a good excuse for women. Because you will see, weight gain is after marriage, you can't say hormonal. After pregnancy, yes. You will always say, I was very thin till pregnancy, sir. After the pregnancy, now I have become. It is not the hormonal. After pregnancy, you say, don't do any activities, feed with high calorie food. Give halwa, give this, give that, quite the nana, nana, you have to grow. So they overfeed them. So overfeeding during pregnancy is an important point. Post pregnancy also. Of course, menopause is always the last excuse. They will say, menopause, no, I am fat. Unfortunately, men have no such excuses. <laughs> no great hormonal changes. The fellow cannot, he has to accept that he is overeating. So there is no choice. So hormonal changes. That's like anti-diabetic medication. No man, see this diabetes, unfortunately, people have to use the treating. I blame the treating physicians. When you have diabetes with a overweight, you should give a drug which will make him lose weight. But instead, they will give a drug which will produce more insulin. So that follows appetite will go up more. So while trying to control diabetes, you increase the appetite. Otherwise, you will go into low sugar. So he eats more. So diabetic fellow has a higher chance of pulling. So the anti-diabetic medications, if not used correctly, can increase your weight. Antidepressants. Both can happen. Depression itself can make you eat more and gain weight. A depressed fellow always is fat. I had a classmate who became depressed. I asked him, what are you doing? He said, I am only eating and sleeping. That's all. <laughs> Nothing else he was doing for two years. He lo lost food, all his job, everything. He was a doctor, a gynecologist. He stopped everything. So depression can be very, uh, make people eat more. And antidepressants also can stimulate appetite. Steroids. Obviously steroids, what it does is it increases the appetite. They crave for food. So you have a child who will come with a condition requiring steroid. You give a steroid, the child will start eating. I've seen somebody eating one whole loaf of bread in 10 minutes. That's the appetite. It produces fire in the stomach. The appetite increases. So they eat more. So, sorry. so what is the risk of obesity? What kind of what? Why not obese? Overweight to an extent you can accept. Obesity has a lot of risk factors. I don't have to elaborate how it produces. Because all each one is a lecture by itself. High blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes. So the more obese you are, the higher chance of you are getting diabetes or blood pressure. Increased <coughs> heart disease, strokes, fatty liver. Very important. Now, See, I'm sure many of you would have had an ultrasound. You will see in the report what is mentioned is a fatty liver. So the fat gets deposited in the liver very early. So fatty liver is a very important indication that you are getting into obesity. And fatty liver can progress in some into a liver failure or a liver dysfunction. So fatty liver is an important marker. Why I'm mentioning specifically is 
Ultrasound is done right and left for various conditions. Everybody, I am sure, in this audience, about 90% will have an ultrasound done sometime or the other. You go back today and have a look at it, it might have mentioned fatty liver, the point. So fatty liver, gallbladder stones, worsening of kidney disease, I will come down a little. That is today's thing. Poor effort tolerance. As you grow fat, you cannot run, you cannot do your activities, you have problems. Sleep apnea. See, many of the fat people, I'm, I hope nobody is sleeping here. So normally what happens to a fat man is that when he sits during the daytime, he dozes off. He'll be just sitting. You know. I have a chap in Madras club who used to sit at the snooker table. Every, he used to sit and watch. Every five minutes, he'll be falling down and sleep. <laughs> so that is a condition called sleep apnea. Because night, they don't get a full sleep. Night, what happens is they snore and the airway gets blocked. So they get up and then they have broken sleep. So during daytime, they sleep. I'm sure somebody would have read the Rajan, of course, no Pickwickian papers. There was a fat boy in that. Who used to do that? So, uh, sleep apnea, musculoskeletal disease, arthritis. Every fellow has got knee replaced. You take half the fellows and ladies, you find knees are replaced because of obesity. You have to carry the weight, the joints get affected, degenerated. So, you have skin infections, more skin surface, fungal infections. As the skin touches, the sweat doesn't evaporate well fungus starts growing. So wherever there are creases, you find fungus growing in. Cancers, which is the biggest problem now. The biggest killer which is growing in the world is cancer. Every hospital is making money only on oncology department. <laughs> High costly treatment. So many patients coming with cancers. 13 types of cancers. The incidence is more in obesity. I didn't put that slide. Not to frighten you. But it is an issue in obesity. Decreased longevity. Of course, my wife says decreased longevity is a boon to the society. But <laughs> people do <laughs> can have a decreased longevity. So that's an issue. So how do we treat it? Now let's come to the most important thing. How do we treat it? So I have to give some idea. I can't just go on blaming obesity, tell you are overweight. You'll ask me, doctor, please tell me how do I do it? How do I come out of it? Yes. First thing I advise is reduce your portions. What you are eating, just cut down by 25%. Just cut down. Whatever is your diet today, that's why I want you to maintain a log book. Keep a book. Everything that you eat, drink, mention it. Cut it down just by 25%. You will start losing it. Because you have got balanced at a particular weight. You are not losing. I'm sure you may not be gaining also, but you are static at that. Now to lose, first thing is reduce the portions. So don't go on arguing. Cut down the food. So cut down the food. Avoid high calorie food. And the high calorie food is basically sugars. So you people have a tendency, sweet tooth, they want to eat. Uh, one of my friends has not uh, turned up today. Of course he says I don't eat much but he always has badam alwa. So the problem is that. So what do you do for that? He not only has, he sends me badam alwa. <laughs> so uh, you are eating sugar drinks. <laughs> of course some of my friends will be happy. Hard drinks is not blamed, only sugar drinks. <laughs> but no man. Alcohol also gives, one gram of alcohol gives seven calories. These are called empty calories. Whereas one gram of sugar gives only five calories. So alcohol also can increase, make you put on weight, especially with the food stuff that it goes with alcohol. Beer, especially it's consumed in large volume. And it has, alcohol has calories. So don't think that is without calories. Account the food. Go for demonetization. Don't, <laughs> don't say that this is uh, this is the only isab. Isab nahi chalega. This account is not enough. Give the don't give the financial account. Give the Lakshmi Puja account. <laughs> so then we will have what has been done. What is the exact account? How much have you eaten? Then I can suggest to you eat natural food. Go for less and less refinement. I'm sure uh, Malika Badirinath is, is with us today and she will give us some tips how to make it palatable at the same time. Actually, taste is a matter of habit. See, what happens is we put dense, we put high salt, high sugar and then kill all taste. After that, you require more and more to be added to make it tasty. So start eating less salt and less sugar. Automatically, your tongue buds, taste buds come back and you will start appreciating taste better. So appreciate for the flavor not just for the 
calories and uh, the sweetness of it. Okay, so develop the taste. So try to eat natural food. You have so many natural food which has a flavor. Somebody can make out garlic very easily. But you may not be able to make out the leaf. A kire, can you make out? Can you make out a carrot by flavor? Closing your eyes and eat and say. So learn to appreciate the flavors. Of course, exercise regularly. Now this is a big contention I have. All my patients will tell me, sir, I have been exercising every day. I don't lose a hundred grams I have not lost. I have been following your exercising every day. Remember, it is very difficult to lose weight by exercise. You cannot lose weight by exercise. Why are we then advising you to do exercise? Exercise will prevent the complications of obesity. Exercise makes you feel well. Your endorphin levels are increased. Morning you exercise, you feel fresh for the whole day. Your brain is sharp. And you all the complications like diabetes, blood pressure, so many things are less if you do exercise. So exercise negates the effect of obesity. So exercise regularly. Drug treatment. Next step, say, I have failed with maintaining calories, I have done exercise, I am not losing, I still want to lose weight. You are in the group of morbid obesity. Yes, there are drugs available to make you lose weight. And of course, surgery. Now, I exercise, I told you. See, if you eat half, 50 grams of badam alba, it is 400 calories. Whereas, if I walk for half an hour, 3.5 miles per hour and that's the I spent only 140 calories so I have to walk some uh, 10 kilometers to digest that bada balwa of uh, 50 grams not possible let us give out all these things no point in doing the exercise is not to lose weight so don't think you will lose weight with exercise don't lose heart by saying that I have been exercising please continue to exercise that will help you what is the best Golf is the best. Golf, you know, leisure, Monthly. nothing much. <laughs> and of course, they are all golfers, I know, but <coughs> you tend to eat more and drink more also. We will bypass that. Go to this bariatric surgery. What is this? People should know. I don't advise bariatric surgery. But I want you to know a bit about bariatric surgery. See, the first one is gastric banding. What they do is, you see the first one? You just have, see, I tell my patients, if you can't stitch your mouth, you have to stitch your stomach. There are only two things. My Periyama in those days, she was an 80 year old lady. She used to tell Ravi, why don't you discover something new in medicine? Put the food stuff here, take it out here. <laughs> we don't require the calories, enjoy the taste, take it out on the side. Make a hole here and let it out. She had that vision. But now, you have the gastric bandage. So you put a band. So the stomach is made small. You can't eat. Alas, they cause it. No, you can't eat. So you lose weight. Next is you put a loop, bypass the stomach. Don't go into the stomach. Connect the food pipe to the intestine. The food bypasses. So you can't eat. So you have complicated procedures. Well. Next one is split the stomach into two. Cut it. And one half of the stomach only will be used. One half is not used. This banding is reversible. I can remove this band any time. So tomorrow you are not comfortable, you have lost too much weight, that can be removed. The advantage of bariatric surgery is you can lose 30-40 kilos. There are so many people, I am sure you are also aware. And only one tip I will give. If you want to undergo bariatric surgery, please join BJ. <laughs> <laughs> you might get people with good advice. Now I go to the theme of the day. So I go back to the kidneys. A small recall, kidneys are two fish shaped or feet shaped structures located at the back. Each weighs 150 grams. Each receives about 1.5 liters of blood. The blood is purified through it. The urine is conveyed by the two tubes into a bladder and goes down. And each kidney is made up of 1 million nephron. I have been talking this for the last 30 years. <laughs> so this is what the most important part of it I want you to look is the nephron. It's made of 1 million nephron. Okay, this is the nephron, which is blown out. Where the actual filtration takes place. Why it is relevant today is, in obesity, the first thing that happens is the GFR, the filtration increases through this nephron. So the first thing that happens is, your serum creatinine, which is a test done for 
Market kidney function actually drops. So the kidney hyper functions. When your weight goes up, kidney functions more. So it starts hyper functioning. When it hyper functions, after some time it stops working. It is like speeding your car more or whatever it is. You are going to give more work to it. It is going to fail over a period of time. So this nephron is made to work more, more filter. So that's why your blood test will drop. If I have a creatinine normally, say 0.8. Now you have gained weight, the creatinine will drop to 0.6. Patient is very happy. He says my creatinine has dropped. No. Your kidney is overworking. You are in trouble. It is telling me that it is hyperfiltering. So the kidney has become larger in size. Fat doesn't get deposited in the kidney. The kidney, actual kidney enlarges inside. The normal kidney is about 9 to 11 centimeters. In an obese person, it becomes 12 to 13 centimeters. If I do an ultrasound. So the kidney has become larger. And there is an increased filtration in the nephrons. So the drop in creatinine is initial. And the next danger happens. Protein starts leaking in the urine. That's the marker of kidney disease. I have already been telling you for years. If you find protein in the urine, get alerted, your kidneys are getting affected. So it's a very, very simple test. So increase in the protein loss. If both happen, the kidney function starts deteriorating and ultimately you land up in kidney failure. This is the effort. Don't worry. Don't try to understand this. I also don't understand. Actually, these slides, microscopic slides are very difficult. This is a nephron under microscope. I am sure some of you would have heard. In college, medical colleges, we are asked to see under the microscope. So we see the slide, we look at it and then diagnose what the organ is. This is bone, this is kidney and all. You go into it as a student. The previous student has moved it, actually. He has not understood, but he has moved. You go and see, you can't make out what it is. So you have to fail. Creatinine levels, therefore, are not an indicator of the kidney problem? No. I said if it drops, it could mean that the kidney is overworking also. No, no. But it is a marker of kidney function. Yes. That's why it is used. So you look at the slide and you can't record what it is. So you fail in the exam. Then uh, Metabi was the anatomy pure. I asked him, what is the solution for this? He said, pull out the slide and see from outside. <laughs> this is not what it is. This is kidney. This is what the slide is. So you don't understand. You don't have to understand this slide. But it just shows these are holes. These holes are the filters. This is the nephron as we see it. This is the actual nephron when we take a biopsy and stain it. Whereas in obesity, what happens is it gets choked. You can see here. These are all choking. This is all closing. The filters are closing slowly. It has become larger in size and it is getting closed. This is what obesity does. So ultimately you lose your kidney function. The same slide every year. What are the tips to predict your kidney? We have given it today to you also. Reduce salt in diet. Exercise at least 30 minutes. Eat a balanced diet. Keep your weight in control. Avoid long term non-prescription drugs. Herbal medicine, Ayurvedic, homeopathic, Yunani, Hakim Kalwa, whatever it is. Please avoid long term. If you overtake them, please monitor your kidney function. Stop smoking. Check your blood pressure and blood sugar once a year. Check urine for albumin. The first marker of kidney disease is presence of protein in the urine. We have given you a strip today. You could go home and check it also. You will know whether there is a kidney damage or not. And I am just going to add a slide for today's function. <coughs> measure the obesity scientifically. Don't go by visual impression. Please measure it. So you have the baseline values. Control those bad <coughs> calories. Very important. Account all your calories. Exercise regularly even if you do not lose weight. <coughs> Most important I find is extra time utilization. Why do people eat? Because they have extra time. They don't know what to do, they eat. <laughs> so you have to have a program. Use your time properly. Have programs for your time. Then you will not eat. So use your time utilize. If I get my OP cancelled or something happens, suddenly I find time. What I do is, many of you know, I go and walk in Madras. I just go for a walk. I walk in the boat club. Do some exercise. If you sit at home, you are likely to eat. Watch a TV, you are likely to eat something. Eat natural food as much as possible. I showed you the two types of animals. Thank you.